Mr. Iwata? Uh, Mr. Iwata? Oh, wow. Uh, yes, we're ready to start filming the Nintendo Digital Event for E3 2015. Okay, thank you. I will head directly to the stage. Hi, everybody. Uh, hello, Couch. Um, as is everyone in the video game industry right now, we are um, sadly missing Satoru Wada today on this Monday. And we thought, um, just wanted to get together and, and, and chat and talk about him um, and talk about how special he was. Because his specialness is something I think, I mean, I personally took for granted because I thought he was a really wonderful man, but I never met him in person. I never really, you know, uh, covered Nintendo directly. And so all this information is coming up about him that I didn't know. And so I thought it would be uh, appropriate and cathartic to kind of get together and talk about um, um, why we appreciate him and just remember him today. Uh, Blood, you are a Nintendo fan. Yeah, uh, yeah, I covered Nintendo for like five or so years before. Uh, you worked was Planet GameCube was that Planet your? GameCube, which became Nintendo World Report. Yeah, and you said you you have his business card, but you can't recall exactly when. Yeah, I think it was like one of those things in passing, or as like you know, like when you're fresh, you know, when you're a young journalist or whatever, and you know, it's like there's Iwata, and like you just shake his hand and get the cards, and you know, nothing like really meaningful happened in that moment, but you just like you got to do it, um, but. Uh, but it's just, yeah, it's just his whole attitude, really, of just, you know, really being joyful no matter what was going on and taking care of his people. You know, it's like, it, I think one of the things that stands out in this industry is, you know, that quote about him, you know, defending his choice not to lay people off. It's like, if I lay people off, then everyone that's left is going to be afraid for their jobs, and then how are they going to make good video games? And you think about this industry, it's like, that's completely the other direction, you know? And, and so many times, like, people, you know, like, we have these criticisms of Nintendo and how they shouldn't be like other companies. And, like, no, they're, like, don't be like other companies in those areas because, like, that's just amazing that people there can have that creative freedom and, you know, stuff like the Miis that was, like, experimental. Like, and I, I don't think it had anything to do with that, but just that culture... Uh, people can play around with stuff on the side for a decade before it turns into something. And I think that accountability is something that I really took from Iwata. Like, he definitely seemed like someone who was like, all of the decisions that we're making, all of the news that you're receiving, I want you to see me first and remember that, like, I'm, I'm here. He started every, you know, almost every direct, um, you know, began with him, you know, just kind of ushering in all of the... The, the news that we're going to be getting from Nintendo. And so yeah. it that was transparency, you know, with the direct and with all the Iwata asks, which were just, it was amazing. Amazing. So, you, so you just, you always connected him with that. Like, you always knew, I always felt secure that, like, he was really involved in everything, you know, that, uh, that they were doing, all the advancements that yeah. Nintendo was making. I think a lot of that has to do with, like, him coming up from a, from a developer standpoint, because he was at HAL Laboratories, and then through kind of dealings with them, he got in with Nintendo and was really excited about what they were doing at the Famicom and stuff like that. But I think it's it's unique in gaming that a lot of developers can become CEOs and you think like, oh man, this guy's just a suit, but it's like, no, like he was developing games in like college. You know, he like his first commercial game he made in college, which is like, what was I doing in college? Like I was eating like pizza that had sat out overnight. But I was he playing made a Perfect Dark yeah. what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, but like they there's kind of this this ground level like knowledge they still retain even though he's a CEO like I was reading this one story about how he was doing like last minute bug fixes on Smash Brothers Melee because he was worried it wasn't going it wasn't going to make it out in time when like you think about that and then it's like well a year from then he was made CEO of Nintendo so it's it's nuts to think like he was so hands on with the projects and they were that important to him that he took that role it's really cool Ben You've had a moment of silence so far in this video. Yeah. What? Uh, how do you feel about Iwata? How, how close have you gotten to him? How much have you focused on him in your career as a journalist? Um, I, I never had any personal interaction with him, but you know, I, I I'm one of the younger people here, and I, I feel like I've kind of gone through different phases. You know, pre-game trailers, it was it was kind of 
easy to be enamored with the entire industry, you know, uh, just because you, you love games so much and so everything that it touches, uh, you love. And then you get on the inside and you realize that there are some not so good parts, right? There are insincere people, there are people that are only trying to make a buck. And listening to Bloodworth talk and listening to Elise talk, that, that's something intangible about Awada that I, I don't think I've ever questioned for a single second. I mean, any time that guy took the stage or addressed the audience, whether it was in a letter or an intended direct, whatever it was, there was an authenticity to him. You know? Even when he was goofy. Yeah. yeah. And that's so tough. Is like, how many times have we seen trailers? Have we seen, you know, something that like like a Conquer or so, you know, like, and, and it might be a bad example, but like Sunset Overdrive, you know, something mm -hmm. that like the tone, it's, it's, you kind of hit or miss because sometimes I feel like you're really speaking to me as, as someone who appreciates video games, as somebody who, you know, doesn't necessarily take these too seriously, who really embraces having fun. And then in other times, it's like, no, it really seems like you're forcing that joke. And somebody put, I mean, there were so many pictures on social media today that just or, and yesterday that totally destroyed me. One was the mustache when they first announced the 3DS and it came flying out of the 3DS and smacked him in the face. And it's like, it's amazing that he's willing to do that. You know, he's willing to to realize, you know, um, in, in a culture like Japan that like, yes, I'm fine doing that. I want to do that. I want to be there for that announcement. Uh, and it can still bring integrity to the product and it can still feel like it's planned, like everything else. But there's, like again, authentic, authenticity is the word I keep bringing up and coming back to. Th this isn't, 100% true anymore, but Huber and I often comment, like when we're really enamored with a Nintendo game like Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze or something, most of the time you can just sit down and pick it up and enjoy it and you don't have to worry about anything. There's nothing distracting you from the immediate entertainment. And I, in a weird way, I feel like Nintendo or Satoru Iwata is the, the embodiment of that. I mean, anytime that guy spoke or did anything, you just, you didn't, you didn't have to question him. You didn't have to think around things. You didn't have to read between the lines. What you got, you got at face value. Yeah, I, I, I love how fun he made everything. Yeah, especially like coming off of like Yamachi, who seemed when you like see interviews about him, he seemed like a little bit more serious, a little not as fun. Oh uh, yeah, Yamachi was a total bulldog. Um, it was like he was, yeah. things were gonna be this way because I said it's gonna be this way. Yeah, and yeah. Iwata <laughs> like super apologetic. You know, he just wanted to make something good. And there's that quote where he said, you know, in my, in my uh, mind, I'm a developer. Bit, or I'm, 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 on paper, I'm a CEO. I'm, in my mind, I'm a developer, but in my you heart, can't, I'm a gamer. You can't miss yeah. it on Twitter, yeah. yeah a lot of people have repeated Twitter. that, made it like their head, you know, their Yeah, headers. but it's like, it's like, that's the most sincere thing you could possibly say. Uh, yeah, a very sincere guy, you know, and, and it's interesting, again, just talking about, you know, possible culture differences. He wasn't at E3, was he? Um, the past two E3s is because of his health yeah, issues. He wasn't Yeah, there. so he didn't attend. And so, you know, we, we get this direct, you know, they don't do things on stage. And so we see him, but like, I, we don't really know when he shot that. Right. And so, you know, e even thinking about it again, I don't want to read too much into this because I, I don't know. And there's no way to actually get the answers. But like, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking to me to think of him, you know, not being able to be at that event, you know, not, and, and kind of packaging all this material to really take the focus off of him and really kind of talk about like, I want, you know, he always wants the company to be successful. He always wants the focus to be on the games and not necessarily us is willing to like, yes, make a puppet out of me. And that will, that'll go to E3. You know, that's what people will see. Um, and then so shortly after the event, you know, we lose him. Um, I was I was upset initially because it was a Sunday when we got this news, and I was like, oh, I would love to be in the office today to get everybody together um, and just talk about this because there were so many things that I wanted to say and so many thoughts that came rushing to me. But at the same time, like I'm getting slightly emotional now. And if we recorded this yesterday, there's no way. Like I was, um, I think the first time I saw someone just put a, a picture of him waving, I was like, all right. I just like went in the bathroom, cried it out for ten minutes um, because he was so special and. Uh, um, for me, somebody that I, 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 I thought we'd have around for a long time, somebody that I definitely uh, um, am grateful to. And uh, any, any other things we can say kindly, not to bring it on a down note? The, any, any, uh, way, any, any way we can be like Awada and, and, and turn uh, that frown upside right. down? And, uh, Th this, and is a, this is a down note. I'm going to do the exact opposite of what you just said. <laughs> but uh, there, have been, there have been a lot of celebrity deaths uh, in the last few years. And... I'll, there have been many of them where I've read it and I'm like, no, that that's terrible. They were a great person, but it's it's kind of like this detached uh, sort of recognition. But when I when I heard about Awada, it it felt closer in a weird way. Even though it, I had never met this person, even though I had only seen them in in internet videos, like this, I I, I knew that this person had had like a really profound impact on my life and and what I loved and what I wanted to go and do and. 
that's it's hard to articulate, but like I think it just shows what kind of person he was, and, and going back to that authenticity and that that passion, for sure. Um, yeah, I I think uh, we'll still see the impact of like the decisions that he's made in Nintendo's next few years. But it is interesting to think that he sort of heralded Nintendo into this new era of like mobile gaming. Like the DS he launched was like his first big console launch. And he kind of like made this new wave of gaming that nobody else was doing. Yeah. Like he he dared to not compete with the PS4 and the Xbox 360. Or sorry, I, PS3 and Xbox 360. I'd argue that it'll never I don't know if there'll ever be anything like the DS and the Wii ever again. Like that that might be it. That might be a moment in time. And I think, I mean, speaking of a moment in time, I think uh, where we're at right now with, with, with social media and us kind of like getting, I feel getting, you know, getting closer and, and, and it's so easy to introduce yourselves now to so many people in the industry and create a conversation with them. Uh, I think he really led the charge. And if there's one thing that we can think positively, you know, um, from, from the life that he led and, uh, you know, the, the, the sadness of not working with him again is to, to use him as a model. And, right. and, and go back and, you know, thank goodness we got so many directs, you know, yeah. so we can kind of go back and chronicle, you know, exactly what it was, the magic of this man um, that was, that uh, he made it look easy, you know, and uh, it's it's not easy. It's tough. You see so many people go out on stage, like, they're so nervous that they're talking, whether they're talking about business or sales or stocks or games or whatever, um, or trailers or, um, you know, making announcements. Uh, it is not an easy thing to do. Um, and it's not easy to talk about you, Wada, now that you're gone. But uh, thank you for coming on stage and talking about it. And uh, um, sorry to do more sad things. You know, everyone who draws <laughs> art and stuff like that, it's like, why are you doing this? But uh, it's, good to, it's good to talk about it, and he certainly deserves it. So thank you, Awada, and thank you, guys. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.